This is a picture of me at the age of 23 on the day when I moved to San Francisco where I didn't have any friends or family. I wasn't really happy with life back at home, so I wanted to see what happens when I threw myself headfirst into the fray. You can call it trial by fire. It sounds adventurous, but let's be honest, it's lazy. Instead of putting in the gritty work to become a disciplined man, I wanted a quick fix. I wanted my new environment to just magically whip me into shape. It didn't work. I didn't manifest into the man I wanted to become at 25, nor at 27, nor at 29. Eventually, I grew tired of just waiting for life to happen to me, and I started making an earnest plan for improving myself. I know we all make plans sometimes, but we don't always pull through. What I'm doing differently this time is I've reprogrammed my life from the bottom up into a system of four simple steps that can be used to meet any of our personal goals. Discipline comes naturally when we have an inner system to operate from, and that's what I want to share with you today. So let's get into it. Step one, lose yourself in the service of others. I was visiting home this one summer and I was hanging out with some of my high school friends and I remember distinctly one of them saying to me, you, you're a lot funnier than I remember. It was just an offhand remark, but it was such a relief. One of my greatest insecurities when I was in my early 20s was that I'm not a funny guy. I would be the guy to tell a joke and everyone around the table would just stare at me blankly. I felt like I had been trying to work on this for years on end and nothing really changed. Then I joined an improv comedy class. The thing about these classes is that it's not so much about the techniques they teach you, it's much more about the people. You can think of your improv classmates as a team of people dedicated to making each other more funny. Nobody wants to let each other down and people will laugh with you even when you fail. In fact, some of the funniest moments happen when people are failing to be funny. My experience with improv taught me that we improve much faster when we are immersed in a team environment. In the words of Henry Ford, if everyone is moving forward together, success takes care of itself. Now, the problem is how do we create a team for our personal goals? I know a lot of us struggle with trying to make more money or find love, and while our friends can be there to give us emotional support, we often feel alone in our pursuits. But it doesn't have to be this way. If you have a close friend who is at a similar stage in life, you can form a team of two. Some people may call this having an accountability partner. You can schedule regular check-ins and effectively coach each other. Be genuinely invested in the other's success. And this means if you're going to give advice, don't wing it. Do a base amount of research so you can back up your claims. Essentially, you want to replicate the protege effect, which is a well-researched phenomena in which teaching others is actually the best way to learn. Beyond the science of it, we also have this primal instinct of not wanting to disappoint other people. And having an accountability partner gives us a natural drive to move faster. Step two, identify your practice. A piece of advice I hear far too often is that you just have to keep doing something over and over to get better at it. And that's simply not entirely true. It's very common for us to stagnate in life, where we're still working out, but we're not losing any weight. The principle behind this is simple. Practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. One thing I wanted to get better at is public speaking, and one of the first things I did was join the local Toastmasters club. At Toastmasters, there are three prominent evaluator roles, the ah counter, the grammarian, and the timer. They give speakers feedback on how many filler words like ah, um, uh they used, and how correct the grammar is, and how long their speech is. After a while, everyone across the board became better at these three things. But we were still far from being the Barack Obamas of the world. That's because the practice was improper. Perfect. A good speaker also needed humor, emotion, and relevance. It's almost impossible to practice all of these things in a single setting. I had to go out of my way to acting classes to find the essence of humor. My girlfriend taught me more about emotion than anyone else in this world, and the feedback I get from you guys on these videos inform me about my relevance. There are also other practices I haven't yet had time for. I believe uh, voice coaching or singing can help broaden the range of my vocal cords. It's kind of crazy how all these random hobbies can make my public speaking better. And my public speaking, in turn, can make my leadership skills better. They all layer on top of each other in intricate ways. It's fucking beautiful. You'll never be truly stuck once you learn how to identify different practices that contribute to your goals. If you find yourself plateaued on one practice, just move on to another. They are all different paths to the same destination. And your team can help you with identifying these practices. I would have never thought of singing if it wasn't for the acapella guy in my Toastmasters club. Step three, channel flow state. Now that you know what to practice, you actually have to do it. This is usually the step where everything falls apart. The problem is when we take action, we expect rewards. And when we don't get what we expect, we start to doubt whether our actions are worth it. Because let's not forget, there are always easier things to do. Why put in so much hard work when you can access a state of ecstasy with your right hand? 
The hard truth is, the results we seek are going to take a long time of repeated practice. And if you can't make peace with that, then it's going to take you even longer. Your brain is just uh, not good at multitasking. And worrying about your chances of reward while you're doing something means you're doing something at half your capacity. The solution here is the channel flow state, a state of complete focus on what's at hand. And it's not your right hand. We all experience flow state at one point or another in our lives. But how do we channel flow state on command? There is one activity in my life that always triggers flow state for me. When I'm sparring with someone during boxing, I am in flow state because if I'm not in flow state, I'm going to get punched in the face. It doesn't have to be boxing. I started doing ceramics recently and I find myself in flow state when I'm throwing a pot. Essentially, any activity where the price for not focusing is catastrophic failure is going to bring you into flow. The more you trigger flow state, the easier it becomes to channel. You can use these natural flow state activities to practice. And with that practice, you'll be able to more easily channel flow state during activities where flow doesn't come naturally. Personally, I struggle a lot with creative tasks. Every part of creating a YouTube video is difficult to focus on. The stakes just aren't high enough. Nobody's gonna punch me in the face if I take a break from writing my video. I have to train myself to remember the feeling of boxing when I'm script writing and just punch forward. The most beautiful thing about flow state is that it is outcome independent. You are always successful in the state of flow because the reward is the doing itself. When you're in flow, you're operating at maximum efficiency by being completely immersed in the present moment. Step four, rest hard. A lot of people who subscribe to discipline also believe in the work hard, play hard mentality. Not everyone's going to agree with me, but I think work hard, play hard is a fucking scam. When you work hard, play hard, your life is just going to be so hard that you'll slowly burn out and lose the capacity to either work hard or play hard. It's a lose-lose situation. The only way out of this is to also rest hard. I'm not talking about being a couch potato and binging Netflix. I'm talking about deeply rejuvenating activities that bring energy back into your mind and body. This is going to look different for everybody, but I prefer scientifically proven techniques, including, but not limited to, deep tissue massages, saunas, ice baths, high quality sleep, breath work, and meditation. Part of my discipline is to ruthlessly prioritize these activities. This means you are going to have to say no to invites sometimes, and the FOMO is real and people might give you shit for it. I've had friends try to convince me that spending time with people is also a good way to recharge. I don't know how true that is. Peer pressure is difficult to control. One thing leads to another, and before you know it, it's 2 a.m. in the morning. Give people time to miss you. I don't mean this in a manipulative way, but I think there's a natural beauty to the anticipation of reunions. By taking personal time to rest hard, you are improving the quality of both your work and your play. Higher quality time is guaranteed to give you better results in your pursuits. And when you get better results, you're going to be naturally more motivated and disciplined. Deep rest creates this positive feedback cycle that lets us work better, play better, and rest better. In James Clear's words, you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. The four steps I've shared with you today is a system I've created for myself that has helped me make significant strides forward in multiple areas of my life. I'm using the system right now to become a better content creator. Some people might say, if the system really works so well, then why haven't I made it big yet? That's because even the best systems take time to operate. My story is a story of progress. If you take a second to subscribe to this channel, together we can find out just how far this system can take us. My name is Alan Z, Consumerist Monk, and I just want to end with a simple question. What is your favorite way to recharge yourself? Please don't tell me it's your right hand. Write me down in the comments and I'll catch you soon.